discussions with the Iranians to end their nuclear program. But just a few years ago, you said that's something you'd never do. In the same way that you initially opposed a timetable in Afghanistan. Now you're for it, although it depends. In the same way that you say you would have ended the war in Iraq, but recently gave a speech saying that we should have 20,000 more folks in there. The same way that you said that it was mission creep to go after uh, Gaddafi. When it comes to going after Osama bin Laden, you said, well, any president would make that call. But when you were a candidate in 2008, as I was, and I said, if I got bin Laden in our sights, I would take that shot. You said, we shouldn't move heaven and earth to get one man. And you said, we should ask Pakistan for permission. And if we had asked Pakistan for permission, we would not have gotten him. And it was worth moving heaven and earth to get him. You know, after we killed bin Laden, I was at ground zero for a memorial and talked to a, a, a young woman who was four years old when 9-11 uh, happened. And the last conversation she had with her father was him calling from the Twin Towers, saying, Peyton, I love you, and I will always watch it over you. And for the next decade, she was haunted by that conversation. And she said to me, you know, by finally getting bin Laden, uh, that brought some closure to me. And when we do things like that, when, when we bring those who have harmed us to justice, that sends a message to the world, and it tells Peyton that we did not forget her father. Right. And, and I make that point because that's the kind of clarity of leadership, and those decisions are not always popular. Those decisions generally, uh, generally are not poll tested. And even some in my own party, including my current vice president, had the same critique as you did. But what the American people understand is, is that I look at what we need to get done to keep the American people safe and to move our interests forward, and I make those decisions. All right. Let's go, and that leads us. This takes us right to the next segment, Governor. America's longest war, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, Bob, I, Governor, you, you get to go you can't, first. You can't, okay, but you can't have the, the president just lay out a whole series what, uh, of uh, items I, without giving me a chance well, to With respond. respect, sir, you had laid out quite a, a program there. Well, that's probably true. We'll, we'll, <laughs> give you, we'll give you. We'll, we'll agree. We'll catch you up. The United States is scheduled to turn over responsibility for security in Afghanistan to the Afghan government in 2014. At that point, we will withdraw our combat troops, leave a smaller force of Americans, if I understand our policy, in Afghanistan for training purposes. It seems to me the key question here is, what do you do if the deadline arrives and it is obvious the Afghans are unable to handle their security? Do we still leave? And I believe, Governor Romney, you go first. Well, we're going to be finished by 2014. And when I'm president, we'll make sure we bring our troops out by the end of 2014. The commanders and the generals there are on track to do so. We've seen progress over the past several years. The surge has been successful. And uh, the training program is proceeding apace. There are now uh, a large number of Afghan security forces, 350,000 that are, are, are ready to step in to provide security, and, and we're going to be able to make that transition by the end of, of 2014. So our troops will come home at that point. Uh, I, I can tell you at the same time that, uh, that we will uh, make sure that w we, we look at what's happening in Pakistan and recognize that what's happening in Pakistan is going to have a major impact on the success uh, in, in Afghanistan. And I say that because I know a lot of people just feel like we should just brush our hands and walk away. And I don't mean you, Mr. President, but some people in, the, in our nation um, feel that Pakistan is being nice to us and that we should just walk away from them. But Pakistan is important to the region, to the world, and to us. Because Pakistan has 100 nuclear warheads, and they're rushing to build a lot more. They'll have more than Great Britain sometime in the, in the relatively near future. Uh, they also have the uh, Haqqani network and, and the Taliban. Uh, existent within their country. And so a, a, a Pakistan that falls apart, becomes a failed state, would be of extraordinary danger to Afghanistan and to us. And so we're going to have to remain helpful in encouraging Pakistan to move towards a, a, a more stable government and, and rebuild a relationship with us. And that means that, that, that our aid that we provide to Pakistan is going to have to be conditioned upon certain benchmarks being met. So for me, I look at this as both a, a, a need to help 
move Pakistan in the right direction and also to get Afghanistan to, to be ready, and they will be ready by the end of 2014. Mr. President. You know, when I came into office, we were still bogged down in, in Iraq, and Afghanistan had been drifting for a decade. We ended the war in Iraq, refocused our attention on Afghanistan, and we did deliver a surge of troops. That was facilitated in part because we had ended the war in Iraq. And we are now in a position where we have met many of the objectives that got us there in the first place. Part of what had happened is we'd forgotten why we had gone. We went because there were people who were responsible for 3,000 American deaths. And so we decimated al-Qaeda's core leadership in the border regions between uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. We then started to build up Afghan forces. And we're now in a position where we can transition out because there's no reason why Americans should die when Afghans are perfectly capable of defending their own country. Now, that transition has to take place in a responsible fashion. We've been there a long time, and we've got to make sure that we and our coalition partners are pulling out responsibly and giving Afghans the capabilities that they need. But what I think the American people recognize is after a decade of war, it's time to do some nation building here at home. And what we can now do is free up some resources to, for example, put Americans back to work, especially our veterans, rebuilding our roads, our bridges, our schools, making sure that uh, you know, our veterans are getting the care that they need when it comes to post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, traumatic brain injury, making sure that the certifications that they uh, need for good jobs of the future are in place. You know, I, I was having lunch with some, uh, a veteran in Minnesota who had been a medic you know, dealing with the most extreme circumstances. When he came home and he wanted to become a nurse, he had to start from scratch. And what we've said is, let's change those certifications. Uh, the First Lady's done great work with an organization called Joining Forces, putting our veterans back to work. And, and as a consequence, veterans' unemployment is actually now lower than, than general population. It was higher when I came into office. So, those are the kinds of things that we can now do because we're making that transition in Afghanistan. All right, let me go to uh, uh, Governor Romney, uh, because you talked about uh, Pakistan and what needs to be done there. General Allen, our commander in Afghanistan, says that Americans continue to die at the hands of groups who are supported by Pakistan. We know that Pakistan has arrested the doctor who helped us catch Obama's uh, bin Laden. Uh, it still provides safe haven for terrorists, yet we continue to give Pakistan billions of dollars. Is it time for us to divorce Pakistan? No, it's not time to divorce uh, a nation uh, on Earth that has uh, 100 nuclear weapons and is on the way to, to double that at some point. Uh, a nation that has uh, serious uh, threats from uh, terror, terrorist groups within its nation. As I indicated before, the Taliban, the Haqqani network, uh, it's a nation that's not like, like others and it does not have a civilian leadership that is calling the shots there. You've got the ISI, their intelligence organization is probably the most powerful of the uh, of, of three branches there. Then you have the military and then you have the, the civilian government. Uh, th this is a, a nation which if it falls apart, if it, if it becomes a failed state, uh, there are nuclear weapons there. And you've got, you've got terrorists there who could grab their, their hands under those nuclear weapons. This is, this is an important uh, part of the world for us. Uh, Pakistan is, is a, technically an ally. And, and they're not acting very much like an ally right now, but we have some work to do. And I, I don't blame the administration for the fact that the relationship with, with Pakistan is strained. Uh, we, we had to go into Pakistan. We had to go in there to get Osama bin Laden. That was the right thing to do. Uh, and, and that upset them, but there was obviously a great deal of anger even before that. But we're going to have to work with, the, with the, uh, the people in Pakistan to try and help them move to a more responsible uh, course than the one that they're on. And it's important for them, it's important for the nuclear weapons, it's important for the success of Afghanistan, because inside Pakistan you have a, a large group of Pashtuns that are, that are Taliban. They're, they're going to come rushing back in to Afghanistan when we go. And that's one of the reasons the Afghan security forces have so much work to do to be able to fight against that. But, but it's important for us to recognize that we can't just walk away from Pakistan. But we do need to make sure that as we, as we send support for them, 
that, that this is tied to them making progress on, on matters that would lead them to becoming a civil society. Uh, let me ask you, uh, Governor, because we know uh, President Obama's position on this. What is, his, what is your position on the use of drones? Well, I believe that we should use any and all means necessary to take out uh, people who p pose a threat to us and our friends around the world. And uh, it's widely reported that drones are being used in drone strikes, and I support that entirely and feel the president was right to up the usage of that technology and believe that we should continue to use it to continue to go after the people who represent a threat to this nation and to our friends. Uh, let me also note that, as I said earlier, we're going to have to do more than just going after leaders and, and killing bad guys, important as that is. We're also going to have to have a far more effective and comprehensive strategy to help move the world away from terror and Islamic extremism. We haven't done that yet. We talk a lot about these things, but you look at the, the record. You look at the record of the last four years and say, is Iran closer to a bomb? Yes. Is the Middle East in tumult? Yes. Is, uh, is Al Qaeda on the run, uh, on its heels? No. Uh, is, are, are Israel and the Palestinians closer to, to reaching a peace agreement? No, they haven't had talks in two years. We have not seen the progress we need to have. And I'm convinced that with strong leadership and an effort to build a strategy based upon helping these nations reject extremism, we can see the kind of peace and prosperity the world demands. Well, keep in mind, our strategy wasn't just going after bin Laden. We've created partnerships throughout the region to deal with extremism in Somalia, in Yemen, in Pakistan. And what we've also done is engage these governments in the kind of reforms that are actually going to make a difference in people's lives day to day, to make sure that their governments aren't corrupt, to make sure that they are treating women with the kind of respect and dignity that every nation that succeeds has shown, and to make sure that they've got a free market system that works. So across the board, we are engaging them in building capacity in these countries, and we have stood on the side of democracy. One thing I think Americans should be proud of, when Tunisians began to protest, this nation, me, my administration, stood with them earlier than just about any other country. In Egypt, we stood on the side of democracy. In Libya, we stood on the side of the people. And as a consequence, there is no doubt that attitudes about Americans have changed. But there are always going to be elements in these countries that potentially threaten the United States. And we want to shrink those groups and those networks, and we can do that. But we're always also going to have to maintain vigilance when it comes to terrorist activities. The truth, though, is that Al Qaeda is much weaker than it was when I came into office, and they don't have the same capacities to attack the U.S. homeland and our allies as they did four years ago. Let's, uh, let's go to the next segment because it's a very important one. It is uh, the rise of China and future challenges for America. I want to just begin this by asking uh, both of you, and uh, Mr. President, you, you go first this time. What do you believe is the greatest future threat to the national security of this country? Well, I think it will continue to be uh, terrorist networks. We have to remain vigilant, as I just said. Uh, but with respect to China, uh, China's both an adversary, but also a potential partner in the international community if it's following the rules. So my attitude coming into office was that we are going to insist that China plays by the same rules as everybody else. And I know Americans have, had seen jobs being shipped overseas, businesses and workers not getting a level playing field when it came to trade. And that's the reason why I set up a trade task force to uh, go after cheaters when it came to international trade. That's the reason why we have brought more cases against China for violating trade rules than the, other, uh, the previous administration had done in two terms. And we've won just about every case that we filed that, that has been decided. In fact, just recently, steel workers in Ohio and uh, throughout the Midwest, Pennsylvania, are in a position now to sell steel to China because we won that case. We had a tire case in which they were flooding us with cheap domestic tires or, or, or cheap uh, Chinese tires. And we put a stop to it. 
and as a consequence, save jobs throughout America. I have to say that Governor Romney criticized me for being 